I'll be talking about what we call smart integrated, integrated operation centers and how they enable businesses, mainly smart cities, smart campuses, smart buildings in their operation. So today, like we said, we live in a data era. Data is everywhere. Everybody's trying to collect data about us with our consent or without our consent. Whether you go to the mall, you walk on the street, you know, you enter the hotel here, you connect to the Wi-Fi, Data is everywhere. In campuses, there's video, audio, surveillance data, mobile data, BMS data. The ultimate goal of data is to generate outcomes for the visitor, the staff, the users of that facility. This is what we have to have in mind when we design anything. So data generates outcomes. Now, in a study done by Dell Technologies last year, actually, uh, where we interview, interviewed lots of CIOs and top-level executives in many businesses, we found out that 96% of leaders said that their ability to use data, utilize it, and generate insights with it, helped them adapt to COVID-19 or even survive. The full study is available, by the way, online. It's just uh, Google Digital Transformation Index Study. It's a very interesting study with lots of nice findings. IoT. I've been in the IoT domain for 10 years. To me, IoT is a tool in digital transformation. It's a tool to collect data, store it, process it, to generate measurable outcomes. And this is very important. If I cannot measure what outcomes I'm doing with this uh, solution, I cannot really find out if it is useful or not. One of the gurus in uh, management, Peter Drucker, he, he said, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. And this is applicable in every industry, including the construction industry. Another thing I want to touch on is AI. AI needs lots of data. IoT is one source of data that AI needs so that it can do the cool things like predictive maintenance or logistics planning or, or, or. Why is IoT happening now? The business, whether it's construction or others, and technology are completely separated. People in the business do not really know what is happening in technology. Okay? And this, this gap needs to be bridged. So sensors are becoming very cheap now. There are technologies now which allow you to sense things remotely using networks like LoRa. By the way, it's not the name of a lady. LoRa stands for long range. It's a type of network that allows you to put a sensor in a construction site, run it on a battery for five or 10 years, and have it measure something like location, temperature, vibration, whatever you want. Okay. LoRa, Six Fox, Narrow Eye IT, these are things that are evolving now, available, cost-effective, okay, and can generate value for you. We talked about cloud, we talked about big data and analytics, AI, and power efficiencies, like we said, in batteries. All of this combined is enabling, really, IoT to be beneficial to the business today. Now, let's talk about system of system approach. So when you, have, when you build a system, an IoT system, like, say, fleet management, you are tracking your cars or your fleet or your equipment. The value of IoT is maximized when you combine systems together okay, and let them talk to each other in what we call a system of systems approach. Meaning, if I have a fleet, let's give an example from the you know, garbage collection or waste management industry. So I have a waste management truck that goes around you know, the campus or city to collect you know, uh, garbage. And I have waste bins which report to me on the level of fullness of these garbage bins. So these are two good systems working independently. If I combine them, I can tell the fleet to only go and collect waste bins which are 50% full or full, and do not pass the, the ones which are you know, empty. Okay? So that's an achievement that can be done with internet things. And there are many other examples from other industries you know, in transportation, smart cities, in fast food. Now, let's talk about the first step in breaking these silos. Today, as an organization, I have many systems which are doing a good job on their own. 
You have a workforce management system. You might have a fleet management system, and, 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 and. Okay? How do I maximize the value? The first step is breaking these silos within the building that we can combine systems from within the building, security, HVAC, everything in the building, occupancy, you know, uh, access control, into one platform so that we can have them talk to each other to achieve a smart building. Most people think of smart building as just energy optimization. It's not really op energy optimization. It's really transforming the experience of the visitor on the building. An important thing you in the construction industry is to think of this and discuss this with your customers in the early stages of design because it is very costly to retrofit buildings you know, when you want to make them smart after they have been built. Next thing is a campus. Now, in a campus, you will have even more systems to worry about. You have waste management, you have fleet, you have facial recognition, you have access control, license plate recognition systems, and they're all good on their own. I combine them in what we call an integrated operation center so that I can feed information from one system and generate insights. Example of this, let's say I'm looking for a car that entered the campus at any time. Okay? I can simply go in a platform like this okay, and do a search. Okay? And search for a license plate that has entered the campus at any time. And it can even show me where this car has been, where it has been detected within the campus. Now, this is good on their own. But what if I want to link the car with a face? Show me where this face and this car have shown together. Okay? Usually, the face recognition might not talk to the license plate recognition. When I combine them into this one platform, I'll do one search. I'll say, I'm looking for this face and this car and show me the occurrence of both at the same time. And this is what an integrated platform will, will do for you. When we look at a campus, I hate to use busy slides, but I just had to show you this. This is the full thing. You know, there's a technology aspect, there's a user experience aspect, there is an integrated operation aspects, wayfinding, security, and sustainability. So if I take just 25% of these systems and have them in a campus, I'm already you know, running a complicated operation. And without this of, or, you know, overarching layer of integrated operation center, I cannot really achieve the maximum that I can achieve from my operation. Now, this is another view of uh, how this integrated system would look like, you know, by, for example, combining thermal alerts. We have seen all thermal cameras during COVID-19. This has become now part of any building, any setup, you know, thermal cameras, and I think they will continue to be like this. Security wait times and queuing times, you know. How much queuing am I getting in this entrance or at this, uh, at this service point? This is something that also is combined here. Detect detection of crowds, okay. Uh, asset location and performance, you know, whether assets could be employees or it could be equipment. And suspicious behavior, you know, by combining data from different systems and running the right algorithms, I can define suspicious behavior and I can detect it without the need to uh, rely on a human operator. Now, in construction, the same thing has been applied and one of our Spanish partners has actually implemented this concept in the construction industry. So they took all systems that a construction company might have on site and they combine this into an integrated operation platform, which allows you to combine workforce management, IoT data and SCADA data from your equipment, uh, incident management, uh, SOPs, fleet, task execution management, and have this all in one place. So a decision maker looking at this can see in real time what is actually happening and can make informed or what we call data-driven decisions instead of decisions based on intuitions or experience or I think it is like that. Okay. Now, the top level, and this is where my specialty comes in, is smart cities. So smart cities are deploying the same concept. We're seeing this in Singapore, and we start seeing this in many cities in, uh, in, in the Middle East. Dubai is a leading city in this. Now, in a smart city, what do you combine? You know, what do you have? You have e-government services, you have traffic transportation, you have police, you have hospitality, you have hospitals, 
okay? And uh, you have green and sustainable systems. You bring this into what sometimes we call a mayor office or decision maker office so that they can see what is happening in the city. Why does this matter? Because each agency alone is doing their job and they're doing a good job. There has to be somebody who looks at the whole operation, a holistic view, and decide the best action to take is this, based on the combined data from all systems. And this is what is happening in many systems. Dubai, many cities in Saudi Arabia are going towards this direction. So, what does an IOC enable? Visualization, seeing everything together. Correlation, correlating data from the different sources and letting them talk to each other. So, if there is a major accident, and I know where the nearest hospital is, and the specialty of the hospital is the right one, I will inform them, the ambulances, to go and send it to this hospital and not the other one on the side of town. Okay. And lastly, prediction, which is something that is in the works now. Okay. This is the, the, where AI comes in. How do I predict the traffic on Dubai roads based on five years of historical data? This is now possible. It's the reality. It's, an, it's a view of how this looks like on a city level. So this is the map view, and this is the dashboard and the KPIs. The KPIs are generated from a combination of data everywhere. More use cases. So predictive, like we said, predicting road, we said this uh, earlier, uh, traffic on the roads, predicting traffic accidents. Dubai police is predicting where crime might occur based on historical data. Okay, and I'm just giving you examples because this is equally applicable to your industry. And, you know, finding the rec recurring failure of a water pump, for example, based on weather data, electric fluctuations. I will finish with this statement. The future of competitiveness, or the battleground for competitiveness, will depend on how much insight you will generate from your data as a business. That's why we believe that in the future, you start thinking of this. Every organization needs to be a digital organization powered by data and running in a multi-cloud. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.